Good morning, everyone. We are continuing the Al Qud Yosef series. We're, on, we're now in Halakha 2, Halakha Bet. Um, so we're going to say, Sarikh Adam Sheyet Lo Beteva Veragit Hamid Larut Sedevar Mitzvah. A person should always have it ingrained in him to run to do a mitzvah, not to take his time and do it slowly. Sometimes you see a person, he's running to the bed Knesset, you're like, wow, this guy wants to be on time, it's so good. But he's only doing that because he's so late that he wants to make it, uh, just, you know, make it in time so he'll be able to pray and not miss too much. That's not the trait of Zerizut, of, you know, it's a type of hurrying to, like, and yearning to do the mitzvah right away. The way to do it is already you should be up earlier and then you can also run to do the mitzvah or to go to the prayers. <clears throat> so we go back to Pirkei Avot again where it says, Yehuda ben Tema Omer, I'm only going to say part of it this time, Veratz Katvi, that some, each person should run like a deer. Run like a deer to do mitzvot. Why? What's so special about the deer? The deer is uh, doesn't have any arrogance when he runs to do something. It's normal for him to go and do it. And <clears throat> and also, the opposite of that is a person who's lazy, takes his time, he's slow, he just, you know, he'll, he'll, he, the world revolves around him. That's arrogance, which is the opposite of the deer. The deer in his humility, he still runs, but he's not trying to show off. So, it says, Shlomo HaMelech says, look at the next one. Lech el nemala Go to the ant, you lazy one. Consider her ways and be wise. What's about the ant? We can learn even from the ant how to serve Hashem. The ant, what does he do? The average worker ant lives only how long? Would anybody know? He lives for six months. And in six months, what, he, what does he do? He, uh, he needs about a milligram of food every day. And he continues to collect thousands of that amount his whole life until he dies. What does that mean? He does all this extra work that he doesn't need to do and he's... And Every second he's moving. If you put your hand in front of the ant, you're going to go over your hand and keep going. So we, we have to learn from the ant to keep moving, keep going, keep going. Even uh, if something comes in front of us. Continuing with the, with the halakha, uh, Mishnah Berura says, I want to say, Me'iri, Me'iri. The Me'iri is also part of the Yalkut Yosef. What is he saying? The Me'iri says that a person should always be clear. It's in uh, right here. One second. Ve'le'olam ya adam zariz la'tefila ve'le'tora. Ve'al imshach achar ha'shena ve'atanugot. Ve'al ifata yitzor litrashet b'glal oshro ve'nechasav she'akol cholef ve'avad. Ve'ilu tora ve'schara umdim la'ad. Don't let your your money, your possessions hold you back from from serving Hashem because a lot of times if you notice most people who are rich are not are not uh, serving Hashem mostly people who are more poor are religious the reason is very simple because uh, the person who's rich whenever something bad happens to him he can always go spend money go on a vacation buy a new car and ignore the problems happening in his life a person who's more poor he cannot do that so he starts thinking about things, you know, you know, it's like, hmm, how can I, what's happening here? He has more time to reflect and think. And they end up, you know, going to pray or to learn Torah to, to uh, get closer to Hashem because they see it as a sign that Hashem is talking to them when something bad happens. Well, it's harder for a rich person to do that. So Meiri is saying here, he's saying, don't let those riches hold you down because um, everything comes and goes person could be rich today, tomorrow, loses everything. So therefore, um, don't count on that. You still serve, to, do, serve Hashem and do Torah mitzvot, no matter what, you're poor or rich or whatever. 
And also, the more a person is uh, attached to his riches, the harder it is for him to, to do anything. A person who has to have a steak every day. If one day he doesn't have steak, he's going to go search for it. He's going he's gonna to try to make more money so he can eat that steak every, every night. And let's say that he doesn't make money as much as he used to. So he may end up stealing so he can live the standard that he used to live. Whereas a person who controls himself, says, I know I could have this and that, but I'm only going to have it once in a while. I'm going to, it's only like on a special occasion. This person, if later he loses all his money, he's not going to go crazy to have that lifestyle. He's not going to steal to buy the clothes that he wants or to save up for the car that he needs, that he thinks he needs. Comes a, comes a Mishnah Berura and he says, Mishnah Berura on the next page, Okay, so we're going back to waking up on time. Person who cannot wake up before Allah Tashachah, which is the best time to wake up. So because he's, he's, uh, he's weak in his nature and it's too, too hard for him to wake up that early. So when should he wake up? Person should, this is the ideals of sin. Let's say, what time do you guys have shacharit? 7 7.30. 7.30, you should wake up between 6.30 and 7. A few reasons. One, your mind and your body have a time to get themselves together. You, you can, if you have to go to the, you know, someone has to do, go to the restroom or whatever, he has taken care of all that stuff and he's alert. And then when he prays, he has more concentration. So that's, for you guys, let's say seven o'clock is good. Wake up at seven o'clock. Now, what is Kodem Kriyata Shamash? In the olden days, there was a Minhag that the, the Gabai of the Bet Knesset would go to every house in the neighborhood, he'd knock on the door three times to wake them up for, for Shacharit. Mm -hmm. He take a hammer, he go boom, boom, and then he do another one, boom. So today, you know, the world's so big, but if you're living in a dorm, or, or even if you... With today's technology, you can arrange for someone, you know, to call everybody up to wake them up or to have a WhatsApp or some kind of thing. You guys watch out for each other. Call each other. Wake up. Let's go. Let's go. Knock on each other's doors um, and try to get up on time. There are a few tricks to getting up on time. Alarms, a bunch, put two or three phones <laughs> away from your bed and let them keep going off. Keep the shades up. When you do get up to, to go to a restaurant or something, put a lot of cold water on your face. When you do all these tricks, you're going to get up. But you have to, you have to keep trying it. Now, uh, comes another PK Avot. It says, Rabbi Dosa ben Hirkanu Somer, Shena Shacharit, Veyayin Shesorayim, Vesichat Hayaladim, Ve. Yeshivat bet bete kinesot shel ame haaretz motzin adam min haolam. Sleep, midday wine, chatter of children, and sitting in the assembly houses of the unlearned people remove a person from this world. You you want to get a person you want to get removed from the world? Do all these things. The person who sleeps in every day, his ruining is he's ruining is throwing away his life. And all these other things. But we're gonna just, just focus on late sleep. So PK the uh, PK of the Rabbi Natan says How much is considered midday sleep? Like how much in the morning should I sleep maximum? So he says until the the time of Kriyat Shema in the morning is the latest time a person should be awake. We have we said we have the nighttime Kriyat Shema, the earliest time to say it is when it's dusk. And for the morning, the earliest time to say it is um, dawn. And the latest time to say it is 
four hours, about four hours into the day. So after that time is over, if a person like at one o'clock in the afternoon wants to say Shema, he loses the, the commandment of saying Kriyat Shema. So by that time he should already, he should already been awake. Uh, if a person is sick or something, he should wake up, say Kriyat Shema and go back to sleep. Um, another thing, even if you're in a place where there is no no minyan, like let's say someone's in the airport or he's he's out of town or something like that, or there's no minyan, he should still pray the time that the the average community is praying shacharit. What time do you think that is? About eight thirty nine. So even though you're praying alone, pray at nine maximum. Don't say yeah, but technically I could pray at eleven. I could pray at. I mean, you have like a little. You have them until like uh, midday, but he wants, he wants to say, you know, I have time, I'm alone, no one's waiting for me. Don't do that. That's following Ratzka Tzvi, running to do the mitzvah. I'm not saying I have time to do it later. And we end with Mishle of Shlomo HaMelech that says, Hadele tisov al tzira v'adzel al mitato. The door is turning on its hinges and this, and this lazy man is still on his bed. So, everybody... <laughs> <laughs> that, we're going to go into that next time about that whole idea of, of laziness. But a person should not be like... He should not uh, allow the laziness to control him. And the only way... It's all connected again. The more a person is into delights and good food and fun too much then he's going to be lazy to do the service of Hashem. But when he does it in its proper times, then he'll be able to serve Hashem the best way.